users can now go ahead and drop these markers onto our SwiftUI map, but they can't then do anything with them. They can't attach their own name, edit the description, whatever, nothing works. Fixing this requires a few steps and also learning a couple of new things along the way, but it really brings a whole app together as you'll see. First, we want to show some kind of sheet on our screen here when the user selects a map annotation from our list, give them the chance to then go ahead and view or edit details about that annotation. Now the way of tackled sheets previously has meant that we'll create a Boolean determining whether the sheet's visible or not, and then send some other data into there for the sheet to work with. This time though, we'll take a slightly different approach. We're gonna handle it all with just one property. So in our content view, we'll add a new property up here, which is at state private var selected place is an optional location. So what we're saying is we might have a selected location, or we might not. And that's all SwiftUI needs to know in order to show some kind of sheet about that. Now, as soon as we place a value inside here, so it is now has a value inside the optional, it's still optional, but not an option internally, it means we're telling SwiftUI, please now show the sheet. And the value will automatically be set back to nil when the sheet is dismissed. Even better, SwiftUI unwraps the optional for us, so when we're creating the contents of our sheet, we can always be sure there's a real value inside there. Let's try it out. Let's add a modifier to the map down here, uh, below this tap register perhaps. We'll say dot sheet with the item being dollar selected place. And for the content, give me the unwrapped place in, and then we'll show place dot name in our sheet in a text view. So this thing here, uh, so a place, this thing is our optional binding. It might be a place, might be nothing at all. But inside here, when it's actually being run, that is the unwrapped version, meaning we can display the name directly in here. We know it works. So our sheet contents will say place.name directly, run to unwrapping or nil coalescing or something else. And now to bring the whole thing to life, we've got to add uh, some way to set Select the place to a value, by adding another gesture somewhere to our annotations. However, here we've got to be careful because although in theory, adding another tap gesture ought to work well, yeah, add a tap gesture to our annotation contents here. In practice, the map view frequently gets confused between existing annotations and our existing tap gesture. Is it a new location or current one? It ought not to, you can see it's a current one, but it often does get confused. And so rather than risk that, having two competing tap gestures, we're instead gonna use a different gesture type called a long press gesture. This does exactly what you might think. It triggers some code of our choosing when the user presses and holds on a view, which is ideal for selecting a place to work with. And so inside the annotation, attach this image right here below the clip shape circle. We're gonna say on long press gesture like this run some code. And the code we're gonna run is simply uh, our set the place equals the location that we're passing up here. Make that our uh, set the place. And that's it. We can now go ahead and print the sheet showing our location's name. I'll press Command R now, give it a try. So I'll press uh, London down here, and then Liverpool and Glasgow. And then I'll long press on this one down here, and boom, up slides, new location. Now, this kind of uh, optional binding approach here isn't always possible, but I really think when it is possible, it makes for much more natural code because SwiftUI's approach of automatically unwrapping the optional for us is really helpful. Now, of course, just showing the place's name inside here isn't too useful. So the next step is to make a detail view where the user can see and also adjust a location's name and description. This has to give them the location to edit right here and allow the user to adjust the two values for that location, but also send back a new location with the tweaked data. It'll effectively work like a function, receiving data and sending back some kind of transformation data. As always, we're gonna start small and work our way upwards. 
So go ahead and make a new SwiftUI view, press Command N, choose SwiftUI view, call this thing Edit View, and then give it the following code. We'll say as an environment to read the dismiss key, so we can hide the view if we're ready. We via dismiss like that. We'll have the location we want to edit like this. We'll have two pieces of state to store the new name and new description like this. And then in our body, we'll place a navigation stack with a form inside and then a section saying the text field with a place name bound to the text of uh, dollar name. And then another text field for description uh, bound to text dollar description. We'll add a nav title here saying this is place details and a toolbar with one button inside saying save and that will simply call dismiss. Now, this code's a good start. It's something. But as you can see, it's not happy. It's not able to work with this right now uh, because we've got a conundrum, okay? We're saying we have name and description, okay? They exist as state, but they aren't being passed in. So what initial values should we use for these? Now, previously we used state always with initial value. We'd do something like private var name equals new location and similar. We can't do that here. Their initial values should come from whatever location is being passed in. This thing right here. So you just seize the existing data and can just adjust a little bit and send back modified versions rather than doing it all from scratch every time. The solution here is to make a new initializer that accepts location to work with, then uses that to create these two state properties with the correct current value of the location. This uses the same underscore approach you saw previously. We made a query inside of initializer for our Swift data code, which allows us to create an instance of the property wrapper directly, not the data inside the property wrapper. And so to solve this, I'm gonna add a custom initializer here. Init with a location like this. We will straight away store that location in our local property. But now we want to also say, let's make that name property and description to be a new piece of state. So we're gonna say underscore name is a new state key, uh, wrapper with the initial value of our location's name, name, and description, again, a new piece of state with initial value of location.description. Now you will have to modify your preview down here to pass in location to edit. Helpfully we have that example to work with. So we can say location is dot example. And that will make the code compile. We've got a second problem. When we've gone ahead and edited our data and pressed save, right now it simply dismisses the view. How can we actually pass back the new location data? Now we could use something like at binding to pass in some remote value stored elsewhere. But that creates problems with our optional and content view. We want edit view to be bound to a real value. It's location, not an optional value. Because otherwise it would get very confusing in our code. And so we're gonna take the simplest solution we can. Hello dog. We'll require a function to call where we can pass back whatever new location we want. And this means any other Swift UI view can send us some data to work with and get back some new data to process however they want to. And so we'll start adding this new property to our edit view up here. It's gonna be var on save. That's a, a function that accepts location and returns nothing at all, void. So we're saying you must give this thing an on save function that accepts a single location to edit and returns nothing at all, which is perfect for our usage here. We've got to add that to our initializer down here, and it with a location, but also an on save function. This must accept the location and return void. We'll stash it away. Self to on save equals on save, like that. And then 
Uh, we're going to add one more thing here. It's telling us straight away. Swift wants to know, will this function be used straight away or not? And the default option is, it's being used straight away. Like, it's used inside initializer and it'll never run again. Here, though, we're stashing it away. We're saying, I'm going to use this later on. Maybe in five seconds, maybe in five minutes, maybe never at all. We don't know, but it's not now. So we've got to mark this thing as an escaping parameter, an escaping closure. We're going to write at escaping. Now, behind the scenes, there's a very small memory cost to that. It takes a bit of time to say, okay, I'll stash it away safely. But it's needed here because the on save closure will only be called when the save button is pressed. Speaking of which, we can go ahead and change the save button now. So we create a new location with our modified details and pass it back with on save. So inside here, we'll say we have a new location like this. It's our current location. We will change its name to be the new at state local name and its description to be the new description. We'll then call on save with that new location and it'll be sent back. So we've got a variable copy of the original location, which means we get access to its original data, which means it's identifier, latitude, and longitude. Don't forget, update your preview to pass in some kind of closure as well. It's just a placeholder, really, just something to test out how it works. So just simply underscore in, nothing at all will work. That's fine. That completes edit view now, but there is still some work to do back in content view. We're going to present that UI somehow in our sheet, sending in the location it was selected, but also handle updating changes. That's this code down here. Well, thanks to where we built this code, this takes only a handful of lines of new Swift code. And so I remove the current text and say instead, there's an edit view with location being whatever place was selected. Then the on save closure we'll say, give me the new location that was passed in here, and we'll find the location of the previous place where it was. We'll say, if let index is all our locations, dot first index of that place. If we can find the previous unedited place inside our array, which of course should be able to do so, we'll simply find uh, that location in our index array, our locations array, and replace it with new location. Simply overwrite locations five, for example, with a new location. So we're passing location into the edit view and also a closure to run when that save button's pressed. It accepts a new location, it finds where the current location was and replaces the new one where the old one was. Copies it across to the right place. Go ahead and give it a try. See if you spot a problem with our code. <laughs> Hopefully it's rather glaring. Uh, we'll see. So I'll go to here. I'll say uh, we're in Glasgow. Boom. I'll press and hold to edit it. There's our thing. It's called your location. Uh, I'm going to say, actually, you have the real name of Glasgow. Then press save. That's the uh, problem there. Renaming doesn't actually work. <laughs> um, and the problem is entirely intentional. If you remember, we told this location struct, you are the same, you are equatable as the same if you have the same ID. If two locations have the same ID, they are the same, no matter what, oh, hello, other dog, no matter what data they have inside, name, description, whatever, they are the same. You had two already, she's had none. And so when we update the marker, we're changing the name from new location to be Glasgow, it's got a different name. But Swift while compare the old marker and the new marker, equal ID, they are the same and therefore it won't change the map. The fix here is to make this ID mutable. We'll make the ID changeable, so it's var rather than let. And now, inside our edit view, we can go ahead and set a new ID for the new location. By saying new location dot ID is a new UUID, like so. Let's press Commander. You've had two already, please. I'll go to Glasgow, boom, press and hold, uh, long press gesture, rename this thing to Glasgow, and save. And there we go, working correctly. 
Now, there is no hard and fast rule of when it's better to copy an object like this or copy the existing one and make a new one, whatever. Sometimes make a new object with new values. Sometimes copy the existing one and change values. It's, it's down to you. There's no simple rule. I simply encourage you to experiment and find an approach you like. Anyway, do run your code again. Try it out. Yes, it doesn't save anything yet, but you can add as many locations as you want to and also give them meaningful names.